Ayo, hey, what is up everybody? It's the Samurai 7 here, and in today's video, we are continuing the story of Shane Stevens, which we started in the last video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'd recommend you check it out before this one, since it is the first part to this story, and it has some vital key details to where we are now. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Starting where we left off on the morning of day 8, last week we escaped the bar and made our way to our new home, the school. There was still a lot of work to do before this place was safe, and that was made perfectly clear when I noticed more zombies had snuck inside. But these two outside doors were still broken, so to stop them from coming inside, we need to repair them. But before we do anything, I need to get some food in my stomach. So I put bacon in the stove to cook while I went outside to clear some roamers that had migrated over. I accidentally took a little too long doing that, and when I got back, my bacon had burnt. But I ate it anyway. Now full, I continued surveying the bottom floor, taking out any zombie I came across. I noticed myself getting queasy, and since I hadn't been bit, I know it was from the rotting corpses all around me. I started moving some of the bodies outside, and then dismantled all of the desks in the room for planks. Along the way, I leveled up my carpentry to level 5. I used the gathered planks on the windows to prevent any more zombies from breaking in. I got all the way to the front of the school and then ran out of planks. When I noticed a broken door across the street, I went over to collect the parts and searched the house while I was there. Inside, I was still able to fill up my water even though it had shut off. I guess you're able to use the last few drops inside the pipes. And right as I was about to go across the street, I spotted a horde in our yard next door. Not being too tired yet, I decided to go ahead and take them out. Once they were all looted, I returned home to clean out more corpses inside. The entrance to the school was particularly covered, and with my bedroom being so close, I wanted to get the smell gone. And after that, I dismantled some electronics, had a cigarette, and then noticed more zombies inside. This is getting annoying. We need to put a door up. For dinner, I ate a chicken breast and put an extra beef patty in the fridge before heading off to sleep. For breakfast on day 9, I ate ice cream. Kids, take notes. This is the best way to start your day. After shoving the sweet delicacy down my throat, I ventured upstairs to start today off by dismantling one of the classrooms for planks. Along the way, I found a comically large big pen, then realized it has max damage. I won't be using it as a weapon though, since it's a mod and pretty unrealistic if you ask me. By 10.30, the entire room was ready, and I went to make the door outside the cafeteria. This hallway has become a corridor for zombies to roam down. There were so many corpses here, so for the next couple hours, I took the bodies from inside and put them outside. For lunch, I had the leftover patty from last night. Then after eating, I returned to grab more planks to finish boarding up the windows. I'll take that motorcycle helmet. We had one more door to construct before we'd be fully protected, so I grabbed planks and set them there for when we eventually found more parts. By this point, I was starting to get tired and didn't want to go outside, so I went through searching some lockers where I found a slingshot. We might need to try that out sometime. After setting the slingshot on the gun table, and used one of the vending machines to house the ammo. I went upstairs to search more lockers, this time coming away with food, a jar of marbles for the slingshot, drinking bottles, electronics to scrap, paintballs, and a ninja star. I don't know why these children have so many weapons in their lockers, but I'm not going to complain. Once the items were all stored where I wanted them, it was time to go to sleep. The next day I started by placing some extra bottles on my table. I've been collecting bottles, empty or full, just so water is never an issue in the future. I ate some food, and then I was ready to clear out any nearby roamers. 
I made my way to a house with a truck in the driveway. Inside, I collected crafting materials, a good amount of food, sewing supplies, and a new pair of gloves to trade for my own. I also started collecting curtains to cover the windows of the school and dismantle doors inside. Along my journey back home, I realized a group had gathered in front of my door. I was encumbered now, so I went around to the front of the school instead. Once I had cleared my inventory and made the other door, I completely forgot about the threat outside and cleared out my car the rest of the way. I guess the zombies outside never heard me because they left me alone for the rest of the night, even when I went to sleep. When I walked outside on the morning of day 11, a new herd had migrated into the bus loop. I wanted to start looting more houses now that the school was pretty safe, and we need more food to be able to continue to survive. In this house, I grabbed a magazine, more curtains, medical supplies, and a towel to dry off my sweat. The kitchen had a load of food inside. I also grabbed a griddle so we can make stir fries back at home, and then I exited the house to store our freshly acquired goods. I ate some of the ham I found for lunch, and knowing I needed to find a generator before the power shut off, I started looking around for houses with sheds to hopefully find one. The first one I checked out I came up empty handed, but did find a gas can. I decided to go ahead and loot the house while we were here. Unfortunately, it was being moved out of, so there wasn't much loot here. I did come away with some sheets, farming supplies, and planks, however. Once back to safety, I deposited my gear and went around placing sheets on the windows. After that, I used the planks from the house to reinforce some of the exterior. I read a magazine and smoked a cigarette to cure my anxiety before eating the rest of the ham for dinner. There were still plenty of corpses all over the halls, so I spent the next couple of hours before bed clearing out some more. After some time had passed, I heard zombies knocking on the cafeteria window that needed to be killed. Well, killed again. One had a fiberglass arrow that I took, and after that hard day, I grabbed some bourbon from the kitchen and returned to my room to drink away my sorrows. I haven't been drinking too much during the apocalypse, but now that we had doors all around and the windows were boarded up, I finally felt safe enough to drink. If you're enjoying this video, consider leaving a like. It's quick to do and really helps out the channel. I'll give you a few seconds to do so, so go ahead. I'm waiting. Anyway, thank you for the support, and let's get right back into the video. Once the sun had risen, I was going to continue my search for a generator, but discovered a nice looking truck instead. The doors were locked and there was no key around. The mechanics looked pretty good and it even had enough gas to get us back to the school. I opened up the window to the house and began my search. Hopefully the key was in here. The kitchen was home to a bunch of food, which we needed, but also the key to the truck was inside. I went out, started it, and brought it back home. While adding sheets to the front door, the zombies came knocking. Since I haven't found the key to this blue truck, I transferred the gas from it to my new one. If you don't remember from the last video, this truck had almost a full tank of gas. When I was done with that, I went ahead and started dinner. And while that was cooking, I moved some of the zombies back outside. After I finished my dinner, I drank a beer to help it go down. Then went back to work clearing out some zombies. Once I was finally tired enough, I returned to my bedroom to go to bed. I started day 13 off with a cigarette and grabbed a body on my way to the kitchen to dispose of. There were only a few more left inside by this point, so let's go ahead and put them out. After finishing up with that, it was time for breakfast. I read a little while I was cooking and then continued cleaning out the bodies. Now the bottom floor was completely clear and there's only a few more upstairs to collect. But right as I was walking upstairs, I realized you could disassemble these payphones. So I did.
By the time I got up there, I was already so sidetracked, I cleared out some classrooms, dismantling electronics along the way. I found a gun in one of the kids' lockers, still not going to ask any questions. Then I remembered what I was actually here for, so I grabbed the last zombie's body and threw it outside. Hopefully we won't get sick again. Before heading to bed, I drank a beer and did some reading. The last day of the second week was now upon us. To start out, I went to the library to cure my boredom and finished up tailoring volume 1 while I was there. I really wanted a generator before this week was over. That was my one goal, so I stepped outside to begin my hunt, but it was super foggy. I checked my map to see where to go and headed out with limited visibility. The first two cars were empty, but when I came across the next crash, I found a gun case and gas in one of the cars. Eventually, as we were arriving to the shed, the fog started clearing out. That was a good sign, because inside the shed was a generator. Just what I was looking for. There was also a propane tank and planks in here, but for now, I grabbed the generator and headed back home to place it outside. If you're not aware, never place a generator inside. It will basically cause you to die. I used the extra planks to reinforce the broken windows, and then got in my truck and headed back over to where we were to grab the propane tank. I got distracted on the way and noticed the Gigamart had a bunch of trucks in the parking lot. Me being from a rural small town, I love me a good truck. Before I checked them out though, I siphoned the gas from the crashed car on the road. The beds of the first two trucks had a heavy duty tire and a jerry can that I took. I figured we may eventually need a spare tire and this jerry can would be perfect for carrying loads of extra gas. The first truck didn't have any, but the second had 77% of a tank, which filled the jerry can all the way up. The logging truck was locked, but also had a bunch of gas inside. And the next truck had electrical equipment in the back, and the last was just filled with junk. I broke my way into the logging truck to try to unlock the back, hoping for wood inside, but I couldn't seem to unlock it. The red box truck also wouldn't let me in the back, but when I broke into the white truck, I was able to find another gun case inside the glove box. I wanted to grab the rest of the gas, but since we were filled to the brim, I returned home for now where I put some of the fuel into the generator and had a bite to eat. I remembered we had another gas can in the car, and while I was grabbing that, I didn't realize we had another one in the trunk. I put them all in the back of the truck for now, since it was starting to get late. I started filling up some of the bottles in the bathroom sink, but I figured we should also be able to get water from the toilet as well, which we are. I don't think water is going to be a big issue right now, since we have our giant water bottle and the water cooler, but I wanted to have enough just in case even if it was toilet water. I was proud of myself for making it to a fortnight. Not in the game. If you don't know, a fortnight also means 14 days. So I had some wine to celebrate before heading to sleep. If you all enjoyed this video and like to see more Shane Stevens' story, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss out on a future video. Also, if you're interested in getting to know me more or meeting other Project Soundboard players, come join my Discord. Link in the description down below. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, Thank you all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.